For a while now, we've been looking at what we call special edition of SOS. We felt we should make it a bit interactive and I'm sure it is blessing you even though it's a bit longer than the regular and today again we'll still continue with the special edition of SOS and I want you to sit back whether you are at home or you are watching on your phone relax let the answers to the question bless you and you will not remain the same after you watch this particular special edition so without wasting your time let me take you to that meeting where the spirit of god was abundant with us and questions were answered by the spirit welcome to sos once again thank you sir for this opportunity actually sir you mentioned something about realizing calling when you realized your calling so i want to ask how can you tell you have a ministry Okay. Okay, to answer this question, well, you bought my book now. So for those at home, they will tell you about the book. Some of these things are answered in that book, Master's Blueprint. It's uh, my new book, just released. Uh, but for you to know you have a calling, I don't want to use just Bible because everybody has a calling. Everybody has a calling. God has called us to one assignment or the other in the body and um, we have to take it serious you may not find it at the beginning you may not understand it at the beginning but as you serve god in little things it brings you understanding in greater things but the problem most times is we don't take things to the level god wants us to take it to this is what i mean you said you are a choir member you are singing in the choir most times people approach it as a, what just what i do as uh, maybe to pass time or something even though it is not even globally recognized yet god wants you to take just your everyday service in church to the level of a calling and when you take it to the level of a calling it simply means you will do it like jesus will have done it if it's on the face of the earth so when we say calling 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 we are simply saying god's assignment through jesus expressed through human to be done on earth so the real definition as far as I'm concerned of calling is you carrying out an, any assignment Jesus gives you, doing it in such a way that if Jesus was on earth now, he will do it the way Jesus will have done it. So the question is, what we all are doing in church, are we doing it the way Jesus will have done it if he was on the earth? That is calling. Physical ways for you to know if your calling can even enter ministry level. It's simple. Though this may focus on people in pooping ministry more, so to say, but it cuts across. Number one, you have an unusual hunger for God. There is a general hunger that all of us have for food. But you know, there are some that they say they have large appetite. They can eat 10 times a day. And I'm not talking about uh, binging uh, food now, small, small, yeah. I'm talking about uh, kill three gari, the uh, wraps of gari in the morning, mother apple at night just eat at every opportunity now spiritually speaking if you have that kind of appetite for the lord it may mean that you may end up having a serious ministry with god because you have to have an av more than above average hunger for god the next one is study not prayer nigerians pray generally because they have problems not necessarily because they want to know god but nigerians don't read because reading is hard now, if you are going to show that a ministry is coming, you have an unusual hunger for study of scriptures. You just, everybody will hear Jesus died on the cross. But for you, you want to know further. So those are some of the physical things, uh, uh, natural things, I beg your pardon, that will show in the physical that you have a ministry. But other than that, everybody has a ministry that God has given them. It's just that we've limited it to pulpit alone or preaching. But that's not, that's not it. I can call you as an intercessor. That's one ministry that is really suffering, as it were. Let me use the word suffering. Because most people are not called to be an intercessor. Most people are called to be prayer leaders online for people to know and join. But real intercession is done when people are not there. Intercessors are not really known. Anna was not known for 80 something years until the master came. And he said, My eyes have seen the consolation of Israel. Now I can depart in peace. What I've asked for day and night in the temple. She did not marry. But they did not tell, we did not know anything for 80-something years. Yes, there was no social media then, but they were trunk criers. So, those are the things that you should consider. But you, all of us have a ministry. And everybody will give an account to God 
what they did with it. Some may just be to usher, but usher in such a way that it will be like Jesus is the one doing the usher. Take it to the level of ministry. When I used to be in ushering, we used to clean chairs. But we are not clean, we are praying. That whoever will sit on this chair, if they come with a burden today, God, they should not go back with it. Anybody that sits on this chair, if they are sick, healing is what they will get. If uh, they are commit, trying to commit suicide, they, if they are sad, let them go back happy. And it's just cleaning and sweeping we are doing. That is how I know how to do ministry at every level. It's not preaching. Is Anybody can say anything. It's free for all now, now that we all have YouTube anyway. So, so that's how you know that. Thank you very much sir, for this opportunity. Um, so my question is um, about this argument about the sovereignty of God, that um, um, whether God controls everything that happened in this world. So it's about whether there is predestination. That okay, maybe God has already set the future. Um, he has already set it, and he's, he's like he's just watching it like a movie. Like everything is, he has, he has already set it. When the Bible said, um, he that he who was and is and is to come, probably he is in the past. Yeah, everything is set. So, so yeah, and so for example, now probably today date, God already knew ten years ago that I will be here. Okay. Here in empty service at this time yes. of the so. While like uh, 2013, probably I was looking for admission. While I was building my mind about oh, what will I do, God, God already knew my part. He already knew, okay, this, he already knew the decision that I would take. He already knew what I would do, what I would not do. So uh, the the question is is um, now that okay, now that um, God knows everything, and is it that yes? That is one, but is it that he's not controlling our actions and inactions? Probably, you know, there's something that happened to you that you know that these things they are not coincidences. That this thing, probably, for example, maybe if I if if I'd not gone to the school that I went to, the university that I went to, I don't know, met this thing and then this thing and this thing and this thing. Probably if I've gone to another place, probably the decision would have been different and there's the cause and effect okay if if you didn't meet this person this thing would not happen and that is that okay no it's it's quite um <laughs> all right it's lucky no doubt i understand what you are saying coincidence the first thing there's no coincidence with god i think english word at times describes things they can't understand so we call it coincidence. You know, there's the word they call deja vu. Deja vu is a, something happening now, and it looks like you have seen it before. It's simple. God already gave you a glimpse of the future, but your spirit was dull at that point to understand or, it, or even interpret it. And when it's happening, you are experiencing it, and you like, wait. And that actually is general to all human beings, not even Christians alone. Because God is good to everyone. That you should understand. Uh, God's commitment to humans is general. It's not necessarily, it just has a special commitment to believers, but he has a general commitment to all. So there's not like coincidence with God. There's not an accident with God. Everything that happens, God knows about it. Now, predestination is this. You don't get born again. You are going to go to hell. There is no English in between. You don't accept Jesus. That's what we believe. That's what we know in the Bible. That's what we know is true. You don't believe Jesus, you go to hell. That is destination. Predetermined. Now, between you not believe between believing and the hell, you have decisions in between. Those decisions will determine whether you end up here or you stay with God in heaven. That God has no control over. Because if he controls that, then all of us can just go on sinning, knowing that it will work out. That's why they told you uh, what's going to be is going to be. But that is necessarily, not necessarily true. What goes up must come down. Jesus has gone up, he has not come down. And when it comes down again, he will go up again. Planes go up. 
We know some have disappeared. We can't, we can't find them till now. Abi, mm -hmm. they go up, they do not come down. So those things can tell you a, a lot of things. Those statements look okay until you examine them. So, in terms of your action or inaction, that determines what happens about your destination. God is not responsible for your action. He's responsible for setting parameters in place. Uh, these two boys, Jacob and Esau. He said, I love Jacob. I hate Esau. Hate is strong, but the root word is, I approve Jacob, I disapprove Esau. You know why? Because God knows that human beings, somebody, I remember Pastor, Pastor, Pastor he asked us this question sometimes back in the Bible study, and everybody was like, uh, all kinds of things. And he, I was just smiling. And I said, why am I smiling? I said, because everybody is explaining God like a human being. I can say, I love Dami. I dislike this other person. That is human level feeling. God is not human. So when he tells you, I approve somebody, I disapprove somebody, I disapprove another person, I only like you based on what you are doing now. You know, if you, I can love you now, I mean, you've seen relationships, uh, my better half, uh, my one and only, then after a while, they are causing themselves online. What happened? Actions changed in between. The destination of marriage became cancelled. The same thing at human level, but with God, it's not like that. When God says, I approve you, I disapprove you, God already as sin, you are right, the past, present, and future. And he knows that I will present Esau and Jacob with the same opportunity. But Esau will consistently choose wrong. And Esau was blessed. You know, to justify God, God doesn't need a justification. I don't justify God will preach the Bible the way it is not. God blessed Esau. The father didn't cause him. The father blessed him with the same blessing. He said, it's just that you will never be able to break the yoke of your brother off your neck. That is, this birthright that I collected illegally, it will never come back to you until that yoke is too heavy for you to carry and you become restless. And that's why when he says that uh, uh, the anointing breaks the yoke, the original word there is actually restless. He says when you become restless, the yoke will be broken. Until something is tired, you are tired of something, you will keep carrying it. And Esau prospered. But he was not fulfilled or satisfied until he hunted down his brother. And at that moment where they made up, that yoke became broken. That was the day that Esau, I mean Jacob, legally entered this blessing. He was blessed all around, but God cannot use what is wrong for a good end. God doesn't work that way. So, God needed that to have happened. You understand what I'm saying now? So, actions is very, very, very key when it comes to destination. But you see, psychologists call it cause and effect. What they are meaning, what they are trying to say is that you are smoking too much, cancer is the destination. You are eating sugar too much, diabetes or something, depending on whichever one comes, is the destination. But now, you have eaten sugar too much. They've told you this is the end. But in between, you stop. You start exercising. You stop taking sugary things. What are you doing? You are changing the destination that was already predetermined. For every of our action or inaction, it doesn't matter. No matter how much I try to say I am driving to Lagos and I decide to park in the middle of the road. Lagos will not leave where it is. Lagos is still there. I'm the one that will not reach Lagos. But I want to reach Lagos. What will I do? I have to buy for a, for a thing, either black market or red market, 400 or 250, and keep driving till I get to where I'm going. So our action or inaction, yes, it will affect our destination. But God does not determine who ends up there. We determine because we have to make choices. That's why I keep saying that the devil is not afraid of your desire. The devil doesn't care about your dreams and aspirations. But you see that your choice. The devil is so afraid of it. Because when you make up your mind, he knows that you already changed the outcome of your life. So, you go to school. Because I've not finished answering it. Because I understood all your question. At a certain point in your life, there are some actions you'll never be take, able to take for yourself. God puts us under parents to be able to take that for us. And if he gives you your kind of parent, it's just wisdom for you to accept, even if you don't like them. 
I want you to say you don't like your parents because you are compared with other parents. Mm -hmm. If it was only your parent that was on the face of the earth, you would accept it. I'm not saying they are correct. I'm not saying they are right. I'm talking about acceptance. You understand what I'm saying? So at that point in your life, you can't make those decisions. God has already instituted people to make it for you. You break the law. For instance, God has already instituted people in the armed forces to <laughs> take care of that your outcome and take you to jail. We are all working free, but we are not in jail because we have not done things that makes for prison. So at that point, they will take decisions for you and you have to believe that God knows the best. So whatever they choose for you, schools and all that, where they stay, uh, where they don't stay, will ultimately build together to lead you to the year where you come to your own understanding and accountability, then you decide. And once you start deciding for yourself, your parents are absorbed of all responsibilities. From there on, it is you. So, what will be your choices? is based on your relationship with the Lord. And at that point in time, we're expected to go back to God. Our adventure, it will reveal, of course, it will reveal, it will pardon your sins, and it will reveal what he wants for you to do. And at every point in time, you'll be following him. In major landmark things. God may not tell you, God may not have, you might have to ask God whether you brush your teeth or not. We do, we hate smell. So we will tell you that that is wrong. Because you will say, I have to ask God which cloth to wear. No. But I can want to put on this cloth now. And the Holy Spirit says, no, that's different. That I don't want you wearing this. And I get that, I realize a madman is shooting everybody in brown. That's the Holy Spirit saying I am. But now, it will be kind of, if I wake every day, God, if you have one shirt, can you, will you ask God, what should I wear? <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Unless you want to go naked. <laughs> now, if you have many, and you're asking the Lord, it will confuse you. So that's what I'm saying. It's not in all those mundane things. But you can always interject in your everyday thing. That's his prerogative. But for major things, where you stay, seven components of the will of God, divine location. You don't pray about it. You move because of problem or anything. Don't worry. You won't make it where you are going. It's not that you won't make it. But you may you not make it with men and you don't make it with God. Anyway, uh, who to marry? Uh, your calling. That's what he wants you to do for him. And I've given you three. I'll keep the remaining four for another time. <laughs> so, those ones, you have to ask the Lord. You just don't wake up one day and say, I am leaving to Bermuda. <laughs> no, you should ask the Lord. James said, those that say today we wake up, tomorrow we wake up, we'll trade in that place. He says you are a fool. He says, if the Lord wills. Rephrase that. Has the Lord permitted it? Is it the will of God? But you know, the will of God is not something we preach anymore. Because problems lead us these days more than the Holy Spirit. So, that is what affects those schooling and all those things. Your parents determine that one. But after you have started making your decisions, you and the Holy Spirit should determine what happens next. And you will change your decision. Your destination is prosperity. You start taking actions that lead to prosperity. It's that, it's that simple. So, it's not really God that determines what happens to us. Everything he tells us is a promise. But the reality is based on our obedience. I put before you life, death. But you have to make the choice. And people choose death every day. Who shall I release to you? Jesus that you call Christ? Or Barnabas the thief? People chose the drug, the, I mean, they chose the thief <laughs> to be the uh, leader. So is that is that simple what a time what a question what answers that we got from the holy spirit and like we always say this is no substitution for regular bible study but i'm sure you have been blessed by what you just watched and we encourage you to keep coming back keep watching more above all practice what is being explained and taught and i'm sure your christian life will not be the same till we we'll see you on the next chapter of SOS, the special edition. Thank you very much and God bless you.